Hey everyone, Devin here with Driftworthy and today we are in my 2014 F-150 trimmer. This is my daily driver and my tow vehicle for when I'm going to be taking the Mazda Miata to the track. A couple unique things about it, it's a regular cab uh, short bed truck. In addition, it has the 3.5 EcoBoost, which you could only get in this configuration for that year. That's kind of what makes the trimmer unique is getting that engine in this uh, style of truck. In addition, it has a fully premium interior, so you get um, a console, which is not, even to this day, you cannot get a regular cab F-150 with a center console. Normally, it's three seats. Um, it had Sync 2, uh, aka my Ford Touch, which is the main point of this video. So I will be upgrading the Sync 2 system in this truck to Sync 3, which will give me the ability to have um, Android Auto or if I had an iPhone Apple CarPlay. And it also has updated maps, so you don't have to use the SD cards because right now this currently uses SD cards. So if you wanted a map navigation, you would have to upgrade this little SD card here, which is pretty out of date. And they charge you for those, and I don't even know if they make them anymore. It's not worth it. Um, once I swap this to Sync 3, I'm going to be using Android Auto probably 98% of the time anyways, and that has Google Maps, which we all know is the best map system out there. Um, and it'll just be nice because it also, uh, the Sync 2 system also had some issues. Uh, Bluetooth cuts out, The like I mentioned, the navigation's not that great because it's SD card based, so I what I normally end up doing is I put my phone right here in this mount holder, and I'll run maps on this and just have my stereo coming through that. So by switching to Sync 3 and being able to utilize Android Auto, I will be able to get all that information up here and not really have to worry about my phone anymore and just have it plugged in to actually get Android Auto working. But everything I need will be now up here instead of down here and up here. So basically brings the truck up to the you know modern day standards. Sync 3 isn't the newest system out, but the one that I have should be updated to Sync 3.4, which is the latest software update. So while it's not Sync 4, um, I think it's going to be pretty close. The only thing it's lacking is wireless Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, which isn't a deal breaker for me. I could get that if I went with an aftermarket stereo, but you have to change out this whole um, panel right here. So I don't want to do that. So the easiest thing for me to get Android Auto into this truck is to go ahead and do a factory upgrade. Technically, uh, if you look it up on Ford's website, they say it's not like something that's plausible because they're thinking of it from a software perspective. But the nice thing about the Sync 2 systems and the th Sync 3 systems is they were used interchangeably in a lot of vehicles. So for like instance, the 2015 F-150, which was the newer body style F-150, still had for the first year my Ford Touch and then they switched to Sync 3. So the dimensions of what's behind this panel are all the same between the two different uh, infotainment system so they're pretty easy to uh, swap so I basically get a factory upgrade and I just have to do the work I actually ordered my sync 3 off of eBay uh, so it came straight from China so it's probably the same quality that you would get if you went to like AliExpress or a site like that so let's get going let's uh, I'll show you what I have in the box and then we'll start the installation process all right so in the box we have The Sync 3 screen, the Sync 3 APIM module, I believe they call it, and they all have Ford stickers on them. So even though it's from China, it, it looks to be legit. Uh, also have what appears to be a screen protector, which is kind of cool. This is the hub that goes in the center console of your truck. So for my truck, I have like um, some AV ports, an SD card port for the nav and USB slot. So that's going to basically be changed out for these two USB ports, which should be Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible. I also have some pry tools, a couple screwdrivers, oh, a Torx bit, and probably a 7mm screwdriver as well which would be cool because there's a couple seven millimeters we need to take out of here. Also have, looks to be like an OBD2 port. Maybe if there's like an update or something like that, they give you the ability to update the system. I shouldn't have to program anything. When I purchased this off eBay, I provided my VIN number that they asked for and it should come pre-programmed. So 
once we get everything installed, we'll check that out. GPS antenna. So that will actually be installed under here. And I think that's it. Okay, so that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. We have to take some bolts out of there to move the airbag over and get these trim panels right here taken off and then eventually we can get this front panel popped off, swap out the modules, put it all back together and then we'll go for a little uh, feature walkthrough. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a quick overview of what the current system looks like and then we'll do this again when I get the new system installed. So on startup, you're gonna get the Ford logo here. And then you're going to get these four quadrants. So basically you, your music down here, your Bluetooth phone information up here, your navigation, and this is like uh, just the date and time. And if you click it, it goes to settings. For whatever reason, in certain trucks, this has like AC controls, but mine are all down here and it doesn't put them up here. So music, your nav, which you'll see is pretty outdated looking and pretty like slow to load. Also, it just has such like a delay in the time that it actually like load so I think the sync 3 system is also quicker so basically we're gonna be able to get a whole new uh, interface in here that looks like sync 4 which will be cool but it is sync 3 and we'll get uh, Android Auto so I'm really excited about that but this was just kind of a quick overview of what all the different options are first step is to get to this because there's a couple bolts I have to remove down here to move the airbag over I'm gonna take this down like that Should be three right there. One, two, three. That's it. So now I'm gonna use one of these pry tools, probably this one, to get this lifted out. Okay, so originally I was able to pry it from down below, but I couldn't get any more give, so I ended up taking the AC vent out and getting in here and just kind of pulling it that way, and I was able to get enough slack to where I can get that bolt out now. Alright guys, so I was struggling with the connector at the top, so my lovely assistant, aka girlfriend Erica, had to come help me get that connector out. So she's here, um, it, it is Easter Sunday, so we're going to try to wrap this up quickly, so she's here to um, basically speed me up. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, let, we're going to get to it. Uh, we got this connector off, that's the one I was struggling with. Next we are going to get these four corners, mm -hmm. these four bolts on each corner. So now this uh, module should just move out, should be free, and then you're just going to have to disconnect two connectors in the back. You want to do the other one Go first? Go that way. Oh, okay. I was pushing it the wrong way. You got it. I should just lift it. There you go. There's one. You got it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we should probably take that inside. Okay. We've got the new eBay special uh, Sync 3 kit here. So we're gonna go ahead and we have to swap those brackets that are on both sides over to this guy. And then it's pretty much plug and play from that point. So let's go ahead and go inside real quick and swap those. Okay. So this came in the kit. It's like a double-sided tool. So that will fit the brackets. 
that go on the side. So here, do you want to give it a shot? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can. We just have to make sure we put the brackets on the right side of the new sink three over here. How do we know if it's the right side? We literally orientate them the same and put one bracket on. So one bracket. How do we know which side of the screen was the like the top? Probably based off of the stickering that's on the back here. Okay. There's probably vents or something. I don't think it's the same all the way around. Try to carefully open this up here. Okay. Here's the new sink three. Check it out. So it's got the Ford Motor Company like on the actual unit sticker, symboled in Mexico, manufacture date 2019. Looks pretty legit. Okay, so brackets are unscrewed. And then here's the new sink three. So we need to take those brackets here. We need to move them over here. So, Erica, would you or like to... Or do you just want to flip-flop the screens? Because I already have these set up to the right sides. So, okay, that's fine, that's fine. So, give me that one. Or here, I'll put that one there. And this is the actual screen protector right here. That's it. It just has a little packet with cleaning tools and the actual screen protector. Okay. Kind of like when you get a um, screen protector for your phone. So it's not just plastic, it's actually tempered glass. Oh. Uh, it's explosion proof, Erica. Look at that. So... So that basically makes it like a Tesla Cybertruck now. So. Oh, dang. Yeah. What you got on that, Elon? <laughs> Tear the tag of replacing and drawing gently. Paste the tag to the corner of the film near towards the other direction. Slowly at random. So I'm going to do this the way that I would do a cell phone protector. So let me shut that back down. It's a little bit smaller height wise. Okay. So I'm just going to do my best to actually center it. It's going to drive me nuts because I'm not going to be able to perfectly align it. So I'm just going to go for, oh, it's and it's done. Oh Lord. <laughs> It's done. That's okay. It is what it is at this point. It's going to protect your screen. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right. So normally things like this come with a squeegee. It did not. It did not. So. He's upset about that bubble, right? Yeah, right, right, there. right there. That bubble. We got a screen protector installed and now we need to install the antenna, which we almost forgot. So let's, uh, we're going to go ahead and lift this up and we're going to put our GPS antenna under that. This is hard. You just have to wiggle it. It's got a little bit of wiggle. It's basically a little mat. See, it's, yeah, a, little, it's a little mat. And then there's a couple uh, bolts under there that we got to take off. It's still giving me some resistance, which is making me a little bit worried. Because what is resisting? Sorry. Oh yeah, you got it. You basically yeah, it needs I to see. be slid that way. Which makes a lot more sense. Yep. You're right. That's all it was. Ow. Cool. Okay, so there's that panel. Okay. All right, so there's some metal in here, so I'm just gonna stick it. Here's the GPS antenna, comes with some double-sided tape. This looks to be like a, a Chinese version, so this might be where they save some money. This doesn't look like a factory Ford part. Looks like an aftermarket one, but hey, if it works all the same, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'm going to stick this to the bottom here. Let 
and then I'll take that off and I'll apply it up there. Let's drop it through here. And catch it down here. Yeah, um, I guess. You want me to get it? There's a little, oh, will it not go through there? It probably won't fit through that, will it? No, you're gonna have to come through here, which I can get my fingers in there. If you can just, yep. Got it? Again, it's so helpful to have small fingers. I keep pulling it. Let's get that slack in there. And we can tuck it away later. I just want to get it fed through. Cord management later. Yep. It is stuck. There we go. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see. Can you see back here? Yep. I'm just going to stick it right there. Okay. Because obviously we don't need to get to that hole, so... I'm just gonna give it a good hold for a minute. We have the wire ran through to the GPS antenna that's now under there. There we go. Good enough. I don't want to over tighten okay. that. It's not going anywhere. Nope. And then you just so put that right back on top. It. It's like no one will ever know. We're getting close. Yes, we are. How does it feel to almost be done? I'll feel a lot better when we take it for a test drive. That sounds about right. I think the other plug is under here. There it is. And this guy. I don't want to put pressure on the screen, so I'm actually going to put my hand underneath here so I'm not pressing the screen on anything. This must be oh, it's on there, but it's not, I don't feel it fully, I didn't fully click. Do you want to give this a good measure tap? My hand is still under there, so please be careful. So, well, it's on there. It's not. Oh. No, not fully. So. The clip is on the other side. Oh, okay. So I see where you had it that way. Okay, that makes sense. I got it. It's on there now? Yeah, it's not coming off now. I just needed a stronger hand. We need it, like, neatly. Do you have a zip tie? No, but I had a twist tie here a second ago. Oh, we probably twist tie it, maybe. I don't know. I'm going twist tie it. That's fine. Just give me a second. Let me kind of wrap it all up. Okay. Make a neat little present. Because I'm going to just tuck it in there. You're right. It's probably better that way. Try to do it tight, though. We don't want that loosening up at some point. Okay, tuck it gently back there. The thing that we're missing is we have to get the screws back that we took out from the sides for the bolts um, so we can go ahead and put this back in place. We're getting closer.
So the next step that we're going to do is there's a connection piece right here from the front panel that we took off. So we want to put the front panel back on top, make the connection, and then pop it back into place. Gotta get this guy under here. I'm trying to be careful. Do you need help? One second, I don't think so. I just gotta get this heavy. And then you gotta connect it. Did you connect it yet? Not yet. Okay. That's where that. your small hands are going to come in. Yeah, but I need to see. Yeah, because those are metal brackets. Okay, connection made. So we're going to put this guy back into place. Being careful. And we never disconnected the bottom one either because there's one that goes to the bottom one. We just yeah. left that for the AC. You got to think too, you just need to get this frame around the screen. So yes. if you focus on lining that up, you should line everything else up. Yes, it's just a little bit difficult because of these pieces. Wait, almost got it. Okay. See? And then, okay, I'm going to let it. Okay. But should we, do I need to pop it? Yeah, he should be, because he had to get pushed out too. There you go. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Yay. So this is like, he's in there? I'm pretty sure. Okay, he's in there. Yeah. He looks tight up here. I was just wondering, okay. So we got all four bolts to put the stereo back. We got the one, uh, there's two up here and the two down there and I went ahead and added the cover back already. It's just pressure fit, so I just pushed that in there. Um, I snapped this panel on. We took the AC vent out because we were struggling to get this side off. So I'm just gonna wipe this out real quick because it's probably full of like dead skin cells and yeah. nasty stuff. Let's see. So it looks like there's actually two holes right there. But I don't know if they line up to anything. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's see. Ta -da. Easy peasy. All right, Erica's going to give this side a try. Ooh. Yeah, don't worry about that. And then the top. There you go. There you go. Are we solid? We're solid. Okay. So next, um, I took two screws out. So we're going to put the two screws here. So I put in those two screws. I made sure they were nice and tight using my tool I got right here and now I realigned the airbag piece and the scary thing is that this is a pressure piece meaning that you just have to push it back in which is terrifying with an airbag but as long as you're careful and you then you shouldn't activate the airbag for any reason so we're gonna hope it goes good you can start at the bottom there you go see start at the bottom and then the top there you go there you have it airbag is nice and tucked away yes so Erica's down there working on the um, the bolts under the airbag. So that'll be the last step to actually get the stereo in. And then I'm going to work on the center console. And that's where the hub for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay go. And it's going to swap out the old hub. And then we're done. And then we'll take it for a quick spin and show you the new Sync 3 system. Okay, never mind the messy panel in here. So we need to get this guy out. I'm going to try to just see if I can lift him with the pry tool. There we go. Just got it just like that. So he's coming out. And then once we remove oh, that's disgusting. Once we remove that, then I got to get my pry tool in those little indentations right there. And I believe right there. Probably all four corners to be honest. And we'll swap them out. And there's some cords. And then I'll plug in the new one. So Erica is all done with the bolts under the airbag. So she's going to go ahead and close that up. There we go, and then watch open it real quick. Ta-da! All right, so do you want to actually help me with getting this out? Almost done. So, see those like 
there's you should be able to get this like in there and we basically need to pry this little module out i'm gonna give that a shot there you go okay so we got the old module out here and we're gonna swap in the new one Just there like you that. go okay then it goes this guy this here okay You see where that guy goes? Yeah, I think, yep, you got it, okay. And then push him back in. Do I make sure I'm pushing him the right way? I think you are. Yeah, just like that. Down and down. So there we go, we got the new module in. Let's see the old one real quick. No, it's right here. <laughs> so we got the old module out, we got the new module in, and then we should be good to go. Hey everyone, so we got the Sync 3 installed. This is a day later because we ran out of time on Easter. So I'm going to go I'm gonna go ahead and do a turn on and walk through the features of the new Sync 3 system, specifically Sync 3.4. So you can see the logo has changed here. And then it's Sync 3.4, so we have the new skin for Sync 3. So if we go home, you can see that those four quadrants that the My Ford Touch system has been replaced. So you have your maps over here, you have your music information over here, you have your phone information, you have audio. So the only thing about the um, Sync 3 system is my truck did not have climate control on the My Ford Touch, and it, do it doesn't actually talk to the AC controls down here. So I'm gonna have to work on trying to hide that. I know it is possible with probably like a tool like Forescan, and the um, kit that I got from eBay actually did come with like an OBD2 port to USB. So I know I have the hardware and I'll just have to get the software and I'll work on hiding that. Other than that, everything else works. All my, connects to my phone just fine. I would show you Android Auto on this, but unfortunately I use my phone for video, so I can't do that. But I did test it yesterday, it worked great. Um, the nice thing about having the Sync 3 system is it replaces, when you're connected to Android Auto, and I'm sure it does this for Apple CarPlay, it, would, it replaces the, the factory sync um, command button. So instead of speaking to like the Ford system, you actually speak to Google through this when you're connected to Android Auto, and I'm sure it does that also for Apple CarPlay. You probably talk to Siri. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.